living for the Lord is a real rewarding life. I'm dealing with the female angel and her riches. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15, the word of God said that she is more precious than rubies. Now, rubies are very valuable. They're very rich. They're very expensive. They're very high quality. But it says of the wisdom angel that she is more rich. She's more precious, rather, than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire cannot be compared to her. Now, this brings everything into priority because now it's saying every single thing that you could think about wanting, it cannot be compared to her. Everything that you could look at in this life and say, I want this car, I want this house, I want fame, I want riches, I want notoriety, I want pleasure. It says nothing that thou canst, even healing, even healing. Some of y'all right now watching me need healing in your body. Listen to what I'm saying here. Not even healing can be compared to her. Anything that... Saints, I want you to catch this. The great God Jehovah has made her, the wisdom angel, more valuable than anything that you could ask for. You say, well, prophet, are you talking about the Holy Ghost too? No, no, no. she's not in that bracket. It says things. The Holy Ghost is not a thing. You see what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost is not a thing. It says in all the things that thou canst desire, it cannot compare to her. The Holy Ghost is not a thing. So the Holy Ghost can't be put in the bracket of comparison with her. The Holy Ghost is God's spirit. And God is greater than her, but God has put her on a high pedestal of value. So saints, I want, I want some of y'all to catch this. Of course, this ministry is dominated by two major anointings, wisdom and joy. But the major thing that you want to catch is that because you encounter wisdom so much through me, that you can casualize wisdom as if when you pray for wisdom, nothing really happened. One dangerous thing that happens when you pray for wisdom often is that it will seem as though wisdom is not coming to you. But transactions are made by verbal prayers. Transactions are made by verbal prayers. So, once your prayer comes out of your mouth, it is arms. You're catching an exchange and a supply. Saints, prayer is the exchange for something that God has that he wants you to have. If you don't pray, there's certain things that you're supposed to have that you're not going to have. If you don't pray. Listen, if you go all today and you don't thank God and praise God, you are not at 70% even. You're not even at 60%. You're not even at 50%. You low. You're probably like at 13, 12, 11. You was created. That's why the words say everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Well, you have breath. If you don't praise the Lord, you are real low in your operation. You're not in spirit. Saints, you should activate yourself in the spirit before the time comes where you get weak in the flesh and you're tempted. See, Jesus was already activated in the spirit. So when he was praying for that one hour, Peter up there going to sleep. Uh, uh, uh. Peter up there going to sleep. You know why Peter doing that? Because Peter was already at 13% all day. Peter wasn't doing the things of the spirit. See, you praise God, glory to God. You give God thanks. You give God thanks all the time, glory to God. You praise him. 
You bless his name all throughout the day. You give God glory. You forgive people quickly. You already operating in the supernatural. So when the time comes, when you when you step into the river of prayer, the river uh, of, of, of seeking God, you are already there. See, some people, they wait to get there. Or oh, I, I, I'm going to set out to seek God. Baby, how are you going to seek God? You only, you, your stability level already low. That's like you got a phone on 13% talking about, I'm about to drive nine hours. No, you can't drive nine hours because your phone already depleted. is already depleted. It can't last nine hours. So think about it. A lot of times, it's like that's how you do with the father. You act like you're about to go after him, but you are already not going after him. You're going after the flesh. And Romans 8 said, those that mind the things of the flesh, that, that they have the mind of the flesh. So when you try to swap over to the spirit, the flesh done got an advantage. You got to you got to cut through all those layers of flesh that you done entertained. Le bosan de le mosa. That's why consistency is better than repentance. That's why consistency is better than repentance. Because when you're in consistency, you are already building up all momentum of your past decision of obedience. Consistency is a buildup of former surrender. You already surrendered. You're building upon the foundation of righteousness. You're building upon the foundation of obedience because you already been doing it. Bless God. Once you already doing something, you can just keep on building on it. If somebody is difference between if a contractor say, I'm about to build up a bathroom and then a contractor that's already building up the bathroom, already set the foundation, that contractor is at a higher plateau than the contractor that's trying to weigh out the measurements. He's still trying to get a leeway to build up momentum. The other man probably already on the window. He already building up the water system. He's already at a building phase. So saints, a lot of times your life, your life is going backwards because you're not a builder. You're a searcher. And a searcher is still looking for a foundation. A builder done lay that foundation already laid and something is being created. Just think about that today with your decisions. Are you a searcher or are you a builder? Are you building up on righteousness or are you searching and nothing is our nothing has even began? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when we look at the life of Haman and the life of Mordecai, both of them, they are acquainted with King Ahasuerus. But Mordecai is a builder. Mordecai been working righteousness. Mordecai is in discernment. Mordecai got the Holy Spirit of God speaking to his heart about things. He knows that Haman is not right. But Haman Haman, it looks like he's building, but there's nothing created. If you look at Mordecai, Mordecai is building and the building comes into a creation of what? Promotion. He is in the creation. Now he has the position that Haman formerly had. Glory to God. And saints, this is how you understand the life of someone that becomes wealthy and rich in God. They are builders. So they are working righteousness and the righteousness leads to riches. The righteousness leads to provision, prosperity, abundance, increase and financial favor because they already was building on something. So when you see the final creation of them and their harvests, that is something that didn't just happen yesterday. They was already building up. See, a lot of times we might look at the story of Solomon like he sold one seed and then he, God said, what shall I give unto you? If you look at the text, Solomon was sowing multiple seeds, but when he got to that thousand burnt offerings, God said, uh-uh, I can't take it no more. What, what shall I give you? So 
There was, a mo there was a multitude of tongues, glory to God. There was a multitude of tongues. There was a multitude of seeds, rather, that he had sowed. So he was already in the sowing flow. So, so God couldn't take his sowing no more. Think about that. God could not take Solomon's sowing no more. So Solomon, it wasn't that Solomon sold one seed and boom. Saints, look at the queen of Sheba when she met Solomon. Why was she sowing like a maniac? Because his spirit had entered her. Saint, spiritual transference is better. Is the best transference that could ever happen. Because when, you, when she took on the spirit of Solomon, she took on the mindset that Solomon had in his operation. So Solomon was an aggressive sower. So she started aggressively sowing because she just tapped into the spirit of Solomon. The female angel and her riches. Proverbs chapter three, verse 15 says that the female angel, she is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire cannot be compared unto her. Let's go to Proverbs chapter three, verse 16. It says in her right hand is, 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 is long life. In her right hand and in her left hand are riches. In her left hand is riches. Wow. So in her right hand is length of days. In her left hand is riches. Now, saints, I want to magnify something that people that are left-handed, there's a uniqueness about that because the left hand is considered awkward. The left hand is considered unusual. It's considered as uh, uncommon. I want you to catch this. For anybody to step into the riches of God, you have to make uncommon decisions with money. You have to make unusual decisions with finances. You have to make awkward decisions with finances. Glory to God. And when you make those financial decisions that's awkward, that's where you receive the river of riches. She didn't put it in her right hand. The right hand, the right hand, uh, majority of people are right-handed. She put it in her left hand because you're going to have to get awkward in your choices if you're going to step into the riches of God. See, you know my story. You know, you know my story, how I chose to live inside of my car and sold my way out. And I operated in a financial awkwardness. The awkwardness brought me into riches. That's why I'm not ashamed of the riches of God. When I, when I go to the other day, I was at the lights and, and I, all I see, see was eyes. My windows tinted. All I saw was eyes looking at me. I'm not ashamed of the, the gospel of Jesus. The power is the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance, because, because the prosperity of God. <laughs> I saw a woman over there. I saw a woman over there. She looking through them big Coca-Cola glasses. I just saw big old Coca-Cola glasses. A little Sicily spirit just looking over there with Coca-Cola glasses. And saints, we act like black people knows it, white people knows it too. White people will watch you down, but white people will drive up next to your car just to see you inside the car. White people would chase you down. You don't even understand why they do why they speed. They don't even know why they're speeding. They won't see who inside the car. They won't see if it's Justin Bieber. They won't see if it's 21 Savage in there. 21, 21, <laughs> the, 
Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Saints, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, no? Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you study what it said, it said God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance to every good work. But then it says that you may uh, abound in thankfulness towards God. So saints, the reason why God gives you the harvest is to increase your thankfulness. The reason why God makes you rich because he wants you to rejoice. Riches is for rejoicing. God created prosperity so that your love for him will become passionate and joyous. So saints, you got to understand that riches and wealth is already permeated in the plan of God for your life. He pitted there on purpose because he wants you to be fascinated by him. Saints, listen, some of y'all right now, when you step into your multimillionaire status, don't forget the Lord your God. Don't forget him because remember, it's him that's giving you the power to get wealth and he's doing it for you because he wants you to be fascinated by him. Saints, God make you rich because he want to unlock your fascination for him in another level. God make you wealthy because he wants you to look at him like he the man. You, you, you the big dog. Yeah, I say that with all respect and honor. I'm, I'm just talking in the terminology of how, how we, he want you to see him as the big shot, big daddy. <laughs> you know, religious people so sick. You see them on Facebook. They up there get angry because you call God daddy. Get your broke self up off of here. Then if you get mad because God get called daddy because you done seen all the porno flicks possible. You heard the woman call her man daddy. You mad because of the, the, the woman of God, the man of God called God daddy God. You sick. You sick. Don't, this ain't no porno flick, baby. You can call God daddy. He's your daddy. He big daddy. Huh? He big daddy. You can call him daddy. You done called Satan daddy for years. Then you don't want to call God daddy because you're corrupted. Huh? He big daddy. People up there sick in their mind because you heard a woman call you daddy. Because you heard a woman call you daddy. Oh, don't call him no daddy. Call him, don't call him no daddy. And people preach all type of stuff. Don't say God is your husband. What the words say that he married to the backslider. What marriage mean? Everybody was a backslider, right? Somebody say, God is my husband. Oh, they're crazy. Stop saying God is your husband. God, is, God could be your husband. What you mean? God could be your husband. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the prophet said, I, I am your husband. See, that's why you can't listen to people because people mind be sick. See, you're going to have to understand this if you're going to live a wealthy life. Because people are going to talk some stuff about you. You better pitch a drop top down and keep on driving and keep on enjoying what God doing because he checking to see if you're going to let people make you renege off of your revelation. Saints, where I was living, they had called cops on the block to study to see if I would speed out of my driveway. And the cop was over on different sections waiting to see if I would speed out for days. Because the neighbor had complained Cause they had a, they they wasn't happy with their car. You know they work all their day, they work all their life, and then they weren't happy with their car. So they, so they they try to make problem for me. They they got mad and said, well 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 this car right here is it? You know, watch the car, and, and you you know, the wonderful thing about white people it, it it can work for your good too. They got connection with cops, so they. The cop be their cousin. You see what I'm saying? So they be calling. And you, you know, I want you to visit my neighborhood. So they do that. So saints, what was so funny one 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 morning, um, I drove I drove out in the 
the the cop was just staring me down. And I was inside the car, I just waited. And the cop looked over at me. He, And then the cop drove off. He was so shy. <laughs> he was so shy. Because saints, he wasn't my problem. The neighbor wasn't my problem. Satan realized that I'm Satan's problem. And Satan just used people's body on earth because Satan think that you're a problem. Your prosperity is a problem to God, to, to, to the God of this age rather. Your prosperity. That's why a lot of times you don't defeat Satan at the level you supposed to be at because you know why? You haven't discovered that prosperity is a weapon against the satanic kingdom. Satan never wanted somebody to move in financial prosperity. Why you think that he turns you against your prophet? He, she turns you against your prophet. Because if you think about it, Satan turns people against their prophet because God has locked up his financial plans inside of your prophet's instruction. So if you can't hear your prophet, you can't prosper. Look at your broke self today after you don't listen to your prophet. Look at your broke self today. Do you got a house that you own? Do you got cars that you own? No, you don't. Are you a multimillionaire? No, you're not. What you were supposed to be a multimillionaire? Yes, you is. But how does Satan get you into that place of stagnation? You think that it's because your business ain't come off the ground. You think because you ain't go to school for long enough. You think because you ain't got no education. You think because you ain't, you ain't, uh, um, uh, uh, you, you, you're not, you're not, you're not in the institutions that people are involved in is because your financial promises from God is inside of your prophet. That's why you're going to need this wisdom angel. Because she understands the ministry of the prophet. She possesses the prophet. You don't believe it? She talking out of Solomon's body in Proverbs chapter 8. She talks out of Solomon's body in Proverbs chapter eight, Proverbs chapter three. That's her testifying of herself. Look what she said in Proverbs chapter eight. I will cause them to inherit substance. Wait a minute here. Wait, what, 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 what? In Proverbs chapter eight, verse 21 She's speaking out of Solomon's body and said, I will cause those that love me to inherit substance. I'm going to make them become profitable. I'm going to make them attract provision, substance, wealth, abundance. I'm going to cause them to have more things, more materialistic gain. This is my reward to them for loving me. Now, saints, how do you love her? How do you love her? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10. Ma reve ka ma randa ba reve ki ra rava ka rovo. Rizi vanda ba rovo ko rivi ka ma reve ke rede. Rasto dovo ko rive ka ma rava. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10 says this. It says, receive my instruction. Receive my instruction rather than silver and receive my knowledge rather than in choice gold. So saints, what does that mean? Knowledge, instruction, knowledge, instruction. Proverbs chapter 12, verse one says that he that loveth instruction loveth knowledge. He that loveth instruction loveth knowledge. He that loveth instruction loveth knowledge. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 12, verse one, it acquaints knowledge and instruction in the same bracket. So hereby you understand when she said um, in Proverbs chapter eight, verse 10, receive my instruction rather than silver 
and my knowledge rather than choice gold. Gold and silver is money. So what she's saying is, don't try to aim at money. Just aim at my instruction and aim at what I'm teaching you. Because if you receive both of these, if you, if you receive both of these things, these things got the wealth transference in them. All I need for these things to be established in you, receiving my instruction, receiving my mentorship, receiving my command, receiving my, my, my teachings. And if you let these things be received by you, I'm going to supply you with wealth. I'm going to do it by my supernatural authority that's been given to me by the great God, Jehovah. He has made me his angel, his helper. And I help those that follow the instruction. I bring them into my ministerial function. And my ministerial function is to make you rich. My ministerial function is to give you harvest after harvest. My ministerial function is to cause you to receive the petitions in which you released unto God. My, my, my ministerial function is to bring your decree into manifestation. Bring your prophesying into an event. Bring your words into your wealth. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and see, the ministerial function of this female angel is to bring someone into the same environment in which God is living in, in heaven. Saints, I, I want you to catch this. Every sower unlocks the streets of gold through the hundredfold. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they unlock the streets of gold through the thousandfold, through the hundredfold. They, now, now, saints, I, I want to say this to you. And I never heard this before, but I'm going to say it because I hear the Holy Ghost shouting it in my soul. The Holy Ghost said to tell the people that there is a, a thing such as Jehovah God fold. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And see, saints, I want you to see this. This is what the father said, that it is the father's good pleasure. Jesus said, it's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Jehovah God fold is God saying... I'll pitch you in the same atmosphere in which I live in eternity. See, saints, I want you to catch this. When, when you sowing, you honoring God, you are in an eternal functionality. You're not in this natural realm. Sowing seed into the presence of God, the word of God, is not a natural realm activity. It is a eternal realm a heavenly realm activity. So all of God's power, all of God's glory, all of God's wisdom, all of God's grace, all of God's power, all of God's uh, uh, wealth, all of God's economy is in the seed principle. God has put all of himself in the seed principle. So, so that's why somebody could not be getting everything right in their life. When they start sowing, now the Holy Ghost start dealing with them with righteousness. The Holy Ghost start convicting them of righteousness. They may be a wretched person, a wicked person, but once they plant their seed into God's presence and God's word, now what they have just done is say, Father, help me, help me, help me. So, so what the Holy Ghost do when you sow into God is the Holy Ghost start dealing with your soul, start dealing with what you're emotionally attached to. Whether it be people, sin, places, addictions, mindsets, bitterness. Do you know that you can be emotionally connected to bitterness? That's why some people, it don't matter what you tell them, they keep on feeling the reoccurring action of what somebody did to them because they're emotionally attached to a traumatic experience. So saints, when you are sowing, the minute that you sow, you're telling the father, help me, help me. Now, saints, watch this here. 
That's why sowing unlocks conversations with God, conversations with God about your life, conversations with God about your decisions, conversations with God about your mind frame, conversations with God about your intake of information. The straight and narrow path intensifies in the life of a seed sower. That's why a lot of times people will look at you and say, why are you like that? Because I sow seed. And when I sowed seed, I activated the sound wisdom that was laid up for me in Proverbs chapter two, verse seven. Now out of his mouth is coming wisdom, Proverbs chapter two, verse six and seven, because we are operating in an eternal function and behavior called honoring God. When you honor God, you are betraying all of your dishonorable ways. When you honor God, if you don't acknowledge him, you will be convicted because when you honored him, you chose the way of righteousness. So when unrighteousness is operating in you, you will not feel good. Sowing fills you with the Holy Ghost. So conviction happens, restriction happens, and even prediction happens. You say, prophet, you shouldn't say prediction because that's something that's in the other world. No, 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 no. You can predict what's going to happen to you when you got the Holy Ghost, because you know, if I talk to this person, I'm going to start thinking like this because I know how they think. So you could predict your movements. If I sit right here for a whole hour, I know she going to ask me when I'm going to get married. If I sit right here for a whole week, I know I'm going to start wanting to smoke again. If I see you could predict, you could predict. You could predict, uh, don't think about it. So when you're sowing, there is a restriction, a conviction, and a prediction. And, and then lastly, I want to talk about an addiction. There's an addiction to follow God's ways. There's an addiction to please God with your word uh, selection. There's an addiction to please God with your thoughts, an addiction to please God with your decisions. Because you are in the, the, the grace of honor. Now, honor is a grace. Honor affects your words. Honor affects your decisions. Honor affects what you say. Honor affects what you do. When you operate in honor, it affects how you're loyal. Honor makes you loyal. Honor makes you walk away from a conversation that's degrading your leader. Honor makes you stay in the stream of your leader's teachings. When you're operating in honor, you'll have dedication to your leader's words. You will want to hear what they're saying. You will want to hear what they're preaching. You will want to hear what they're doing. You will stay in flow with them. That's the power of honor. Honor creates a regiment of commitment. Honor creates a regiment of commitment. Whenever somebody is operating in honor, you know what takes place? They start becoming committed. That's what takes place. When somebody is operating in honor, they start becoming committed. And it don't matter what, 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 what comes their way, they're going to stay in flow with their leader. No matter what comes their way, they're going to stay in flow with their leader. Marabah Korebe. You never tell your leader no. You hear Dr. Mike Murdoch? You hear what he said? He said, I never tell him no. So what I preach to you is not a lie. You hear it from the king himself. And see, that's private stuff. I, 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 it's not like I boast about that stuff. But since, since he articulated it publicly, I'm just piggybacking off of what he said publicly. But what I'm saying to you is that, and that's why uh, some of you are, you watch me for the first time. You don't understand. I've been calling Dr. Mark Murdoch King since 2015. You see? So, so, so when you call me King, I was already doing that. I was calling him master in 2015. I was calling him my Jesus in the flesh in 2015. So when I reap a harvest of people doing that to me, people just want to hop on talking about, oh, you got the people calling him king. I'm reaping my harvest. Can I reap a harvest, nigga? I can reap my harvest. The Bible says you reap what you sow. Nigga. 
I can reap my harvest. I reap what I sow. You, you, you disrespect people in your past, people disrespect you in your future. You honor somebody in your past, somebody honor you in your future. That's what happens. So a lot of stuff that you see, you wonder why the spirit of God have you respond to me like that. See, it's the spirit having you do that because I did that. I'm, I, I was doing that. So, so somebody can't look at somebody that's receiving a harvest and say, you proud. No, I'm not proud. It was humility that unlocked this. You see what I'm saying? That's why somebody could look at your big house and say, oh, they proud. They robbing people. No, I wasn't robbing people. That's why I got this. I was supplying people. I reap what I sold. See, you you got to you got you 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 got to be someone that recognizes that God on purpose put your man of God in front of you for you to see the effectiveness of how harvests work. See, saints, right now, right now, right now, you can look at Prophet Joshua Holmes and understand harvests are real. Because when you start from the bottom and now you're here, you can look and say, well, I know if God is not a respecter of persons, this is what's happening to me also. This is what's happening to me also. Saints, I, I got to boast in this. I got to, ah, yeah, yeah, no, I got to do it. Dr. Mike Murdoch gave me access to his builders. The people that build on stuff to his stuff. He gave me access to his builders. Listen, I got, I got to talk about this. Because this is a harvest. And there's only one other preacher that he do that for. Saints, when you are in honor, there's things that you don't even ask for that will come to you because God is addicted to seeing you happy. Saints, that's what I'm telling you. Live a so in life because you'll reap it in the future. Reap it in the future. Um, I, I remember Dr. Murdoch told me uh, when I, uh, with a, a library. It was built on a library for me, right? And he told me, what books would you like in your library? You can have any author, any, any, any person. You know what I told Dr. Murdoch? I only want your books. Just give me all your books. I don't want those. He was pleased with the answer. Now watch this here. You know, some of you all that's untrained. Somebody tell you, you know, what, what books you want? Any movie you want to watch? Any, 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 any conference you want to go to? Well, I want to go. To, I want. I want to go to Bishop so and so. I, I want. Why? 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 Watch. When you're in honor, you magnify your divine connection. As your fascination. See, dishonorable people, they don't know how to even deal with favor because they'll start talking about, you know, you know, uh, uh, the preacher, you know, and yeah, you know, the preacher, you know, he got a lot of revelation. He got a lot of wisdom. Why, why are you talking about this? They, they, they ain't favor you. They didn't favor you. They didn't favor you. They didn't favor you. They didn't invest in you. They they did it. So if you if you get in favor from somebody, you're there tells them, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. This other preacher up there. Yeah. Oh, oh. So so when he asked me, I said, give me all your books. Give me all your books. I don't want no library with with, with no 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 five authors. I don't want to read about Oprah. I don't want to read Oprah new book. I don't want to read Tyler Perry. I don't want to read this stuff. Right now. 
maybe, 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 maybe. If, 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 but if God gave me an instruction to read it, I'll, 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 I'll plant all of my excitement in there. But my focus is honor. When you live a life of honor, you live a life of loyalty. See, saints, you only could get into disloyalty because of dishonor. And watch this here. You can't get back into loyalty if you don't honor. There are people, if you operate in disloyalty, you can't get back into loyalty because you say something. You get back into loyalty by honor. Honor is the transmission to loyalty. Honor is is the engine to loyalty. So if you don't get back into honor, you can't be loyal. Say you got a say you got a mama, right? And your mama take care of you. She's a godly woman and you went out into sin, you did all type of stuff. Say this, right? And you and you tell your mama, "Mama, I'm I'm sorry for disrespecting you. I'm a love on you. I'm going to respect you." You can't do that. You got to honor her. You don't got the power to do that. Until you honor her, then that's when you could be loyal to her. You can't say, oh, mama, I'm sorry that I cussed you out. I'm sorry that I did this to you. No, you're not sorry until you honor her. You can't leave this loyalty and dishonor in a bracket and just say, well, I fix it. No, you fix it by the activity of honor. Honor is the mechanic to a broken situation. Honor is the mechanic to a broken situation. So you want to repair the situation? You step into honor. You step into honor. That's how you fix it. Some of y'all are learning something on here. You just don't know it. You're learning something on here. But you just don't know it. You step now. Now, why? Because this is the female angel and her riches. This is how God brings you into that wealth through the wisdom of God. What I'm saying to you on here, I'm showing you something. I'm showing you something. Stop apologizing with your mouth and apologize with your decisions. Talk is cheaper than a crackhead beep in the street. Get out cheap talk and get into money talk. God wants you to honor to repair broken situations. Stop talking about what you're not going to do. Honor. Oh, I'm not going to talk. Against you, mama. I'm not going to do you wrong, mama. Shut your broke self up and pitch your seed in the ground. That's how you know that you ain't going to disrespect her because you coming into covenant with her and you're honoring her and you're showing her I am in loyalty to you. That's the same way it go with a man of God. Don't be talking about I'm going to be faithful to you, man of God. I'm going to listen to you, man of God. Pitch your seed in the ground. Pitch your seed in the ground. You don't even know how to sow seed. You, you think you're going to sow your soul? Seed is lesser than your soul. So if you can't sow your, your seed, you sure can't sow your soul. Oh, I'm going to be loyal to you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to be there for you. Use a, use a liar. Because your soul is a great, at a greater level than seed. Whoa. So how could you be saying, I'm going to do all this stuff and, 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 whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. The father just said something to me. He said, son, son, how, he said, son, how about you say something in a higher display and say this, that the seed and your soul is on the same level. No, no, I just heard the great God Jehovah just say that to me. 
the, the one that sits on the throne that reigns forevermore, that breathes on the earth, and man is, birds is, every creeping thing, every living thing, every lion, every bear, every cheetah came from his breath. He said, tell the people that seed and soul is in the same bracket. So don't say that you sowing your soul to me and you ain't sowing no seed to me because you're lying. Because if you were sowing your soul, you would have sowed seed too. So many people out there talk to Lord, I give you my soul. Where your seed? You're not willing to sow the seed, but you think that you sowing your soul? You're tricking yourself. Because the seed and soul is at the same time. Is the same solar system. They're in the same space. They, they're inseparable. That's why God often deems people that are sowers friends. He trusts them with certain assignments because your seed and your soul is in the same bracket. When your seed keep on leaving and going into the presence of God, the word of God, you're, you're saying soul going to his presence, soul going to his word, soul going to the anointing, soul going to the glory, soul going to the prophet. That's, that's what you're telling your soul, going to the prophet. That's why the Bible talk about the spirit of the prophet. Where's the spirit of the prophet? Inside the prophet, inside the prophet, glory to God, soul and seed go together. Don't be trying to uh, cheap talk your way into repentance. You talking about, oh, well, prophet, you, know I mean? you, you talking about I got to pay for my forgiveness? Nigga, you was paying Satan, you didn't have a problem with it, did you? You going to hop over to God and you think that God ain't worthy of honor? You was paying Satan, your body parts, your time, your moments, your words, your thoughts, your imaginations. Then you going to come over here by the kingdom of heaven and try to debate whether God is worthy of compensation. Blessed be God. You won't come over to the kingdom of heaven and ask a question. Do I got to pay God? Well, well, you were paying Satan. You, you ain't pay. You, you ain't have no problem when you're paying Satan, paying attention, paying Satan, your bodily movements, your body parts. So when you come over in the kingdom system, you should be enthusiastic about paying God. You know, the tongue says, I ain't got to pay God to get no miracle. Did you get a miracle? You ain't get it, did you? All right. Thank you. All right. So let's, let's move along strong. You still ain't got the miracle, did you? I ain't got to pay God to live in no mansion. Do you? Is you live in that mansion? All right. Thank you. Thank you. I ain't got to pay God to get no debt free car. Do you got a debt free car? Do, do you? Huh? Hello? Do you got a debt free car? Huh? Hello? Do you got death free car? I ain't got pay God. I ain't got so no seed to step into my health. Do you got health? You got health? Yeah, yeah, because you need divine wisdom. Look at that man, CB. You remember that man, CB? Tried, tried to tell people how, how to stay in health. That man died. That man died. That man died. They try, they, they try to tell people how to extend their life. You can't extend your life without the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, and, and saints, some of y'all may say, well, well, prophet, how, how, how come a lot of wicked people live a long time? Because God giving them a long time to repent. God be giving them a long time. And, and, and if you go to hell after you live a hundred years, boy, you deserve to be slapped with some Vienna sausage in the, in the gates of hell. You deserve to be slapped real strong. If, if, if you live your whole life, 100 plus years, 50 plus years, and you ain't follow God, you deserve to be whooped. You deserve to be slapped up inside your head all for eternity. The female angel and her riches. Saints, God got a financial plan for you in the seed. God got a financial plan for you in praise. God got a financial uh, plan for you in forgiving your enemies. God has a financial plan for you in studying and meditating his word. God got a financial plan for you in you seeking him and denying yourself. Saints, there is a financial strength that God has reserved for the strong sower. There's a financial strength that God has reserved for the strong sower. Your sowing has to be strengthened by you because you remember your flesh has lived this whole life operating in, in robbery and theft. You see what I'm saying? So, so you got to build up your muscle. You haven't been in the financial gym of the kingdom of God. You've, you've been in the financial slavery of Pharaoh. 
So when you come over to the financial gym, you got to stretch your sowing bones, stretch your seed faith bones, stretch your bones of expectation, stretch the bones of harvesting, stretch the bones of, of decreeing and prophesying, stretch the bones. You haven't seen the totality of your financial river. You haven't seen the totality. You got to understand. You got to understand when you get into that financial gym, your, 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 your sewing bones get sore easily. So, so you sew at a level, you think that you finish. And God wants you to keep on sewing. I'm sore right now. God like, come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to get you somewhere. I'm trying to get you somewhere. You, 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 you don't understand. You are already behind schedule. I done had vehicles, I done had people, I done had relationships, I done had open doors, I done had ideas that I wanted to give to you, but it is attached to your seed. A lot of divine ideas are on the umbilical cord of your seed. Uh, you, you caught that? Divine ideas are on the umbilical cord, the umbilical cord of your seed. So it's tied to your seed. There's certain things that God wants to drop in your mind with the seed. That's what he wants to do. And he needs to see you in honor for him to do it. Saints, I want to tell you like this. You would have never met Prophet Joshua Holmes without honor. God in the flesh is hidden in seed sowing. God in the flesh is hidden in seed sowing.